Hi, hello, and good afternoon to everyone. My name is Gregory Braddon, and I'm the Executive Director at, of Horticulture for Agro Chicago. We're here this evening to bring the awareness to our communities here in Chicago of who we are. I would like to, uh, my board to introduce themselves, starting with you, Robin. I'm Robin Carroll. I'm a co-founder and the president of iGrow Chicago. I'm Andre Brown. I'm community relations. I'm Tamika Lawson, the executive director of development. And welcome you all tonight. Uh, we're here tonight to talk about what we do and who we are and what the community expects from us and what we offer the community. Could we start with you, Robin? Yes, on what we offer the community. Uh, my first question is, uh, how did you get involved with iGrow Chicago? I came to a community meeting that you were sitting in discussing urban farming, and I asked you if I could come out and watch and see what you do, and I started farming with you. Uh, um. I do a lot of community uh, segments. Uh, could you tell me where? Well, we started out on 71st Street in Inglewood. Yes. And then that summer you got a job for four and a half acres of a farm. And that's what really started it all. And that's how I grow started. Yes. And uh, Andre, you're an interesting part. You volunteered for I grow for four months. Yes, yes. And you was a chef in the kitchen. Yes, this is true. Oh, so, so what won your heart? I was working at a vegan vegetarian restaurant and Gregory Braddon came in and asked me, "Do you want to do? Are you interested in farming?" So I said, "It sounds great, but I don't really know about farming." Then he was like, "Don't worry about it. I'll train you." So I was like, "All right." So we went across the street. Across the street, uh, it's on like 73rd and uh, Jeffrey, and he got this big lot. And he said, "Well, this is where we're gonna be growing food." So I'm looking at the lot like, "This is an asshole. How, how are we gonna grow food in here?" He said, I'm going to teach you everything step by step. He said, first, we got to clean this whole lot out. So I'm looking at him like, do you see this lot? So one thing led to another. So he showed me how to do raised beds. He showed me how to lay hay barrels. He showed me how to do wood chips. So when I learned all this stuff, I started I start liking it. So I'm like, okay, I can do this more often. Then one thing led to another. Then he said, okay, I'm going to give you some students to work with you. So I said, okay, okay, that sounds fun. But I was so happy to do it and so geeked. I started like a week before the, uh, before the students came. So when they came, so the students were looking at me like, this is a lot of work. I said, that's okay, we're going to do this. We're a community, we're going to do this. So he told me, I said, so what's the name of the, uh, the company I'm working for? He said, Agro. And when he told me that, I was like, well, I need to be a part of this. So he smiled at me. He said, just, we'll talk about that later. And so when I got on board, I should have been doing this because I love it. I love what I do. I also heard that you took it a step farther. You're raising chickens in the city. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. And that's the funny thing because me, myself, personally, I've never seen a live rooster or hens and chickens. So when he brung, he pulls up at the garden. So I'm like, what is this you got in the truck? So he said, roosters and hens. So I'm like, are you kidding? So we unload it, we build in the hen house and everything. So we get all that squared away. So now the community hearing these rooster sounds. So they come over and be like, are these real roosters you all have? I said, yes, they are real roosters. So now all the community, all the schools, you know, the businesses want to come in and see this because they've never seen this. All they've seen is this lot sitting here for years, an asshole. So what we turn from an asshole is like a beautiful garden. It's, it's gorgeous. Okay. And Tamika, uh, you were working at a, a at a school, matter of fact, uh, Inglewood's first monastery school. And what got you interested in uh, being a part of iGrow Chicago? Robin came to the school looking for a place to teach yoga. And part of my job there was to manage the volunteers. And so I kind of helped her set up the structure within the school to teach yoga and Robin became more involved when we did a, a peace celebration for Martin Luther King Day. I began to watch Robin and saw that her vision was beyond the school. She wanted to help sustain the community. 
um, the Inglewood community. And I just wanted to support her in any way that I possibly could. So it kind of started from there. And Robin, uh, you, you created another program within the schools to help our pre pre-grade children called uh, I Wolf I Read. I Wolf I Read. Could you tell us more about that? I have a dog, an 85 pound poodle, and we trained him, he's two years old, to become a therapy dog. So he goes in and he reads with all of the kids and he is more for enlightenment and enrichment because they tell him all sorts of stories. They feel really comfortable reading to him. It doesn't matter if you don't know the words. Um, and at a certain point I keep saying, I disappear from the room. The kids don't, they only speak to my dog Mario. They don't speak to me. Um, and they can tell Mario anything. Uh, also, uh, you've participated in some events with I Grow Chicago, such as Feed the Hungry, uh, Feed Fest with Friends. Could you tell us more about Fest with Friends that you just did uh, at uh, the Harper School? Harper High School? Thanksgiving for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, yes. So we partnered with an alderman over in the 15th Ward to feed 150 of her community residents. And it was amazing. We cooked, we roasted turkeys and had jerk turkey. And just to see the community members come out and get fed and also receive information from the resource fair really did something for that community. And everyone likes to eat. So we like to help to provide healthy food for the Inglewood community. And Robin, it's to my understanding that uh, it, with partnership of uh, intergenerational growing projects that you do something like this on feeding the hungry once every year. Yes, we do feed the hungry once a year. We're going to do harvest fest once a year. Um, and it keeps growing. The first year, uh, 250 people come out. This year, I actually was kind of surprised for Inglewood when we did the first one there. We got 400 people in October. Um, and uh, it creates a sense of community. The Buffalo Soldiers joined you yes, in October. Y'all remember that. That was wonderful. The kids loved the horses. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't get the chance to tell the story about the Buffalo Soldiers, but uh, it was it indicated that uh, through the schools that no one knew that there was one female in that Buffalo, in that, in that cavalry. Uh, Andre, mm -hmm. you helped you help with this event. Uh, for Thanksgiving. Uh, how did you feel that the community enhanced from it? Well, I loved it because working with Agro is an experience, experience by itself because you never know what Agro is going to do. So when I come on board, all these different events happening and and have me trying to put life back in different communities, like starting with Inglewood, you know, everybody like, y'all going to Inglewood? you know, quote unquote, how bad it's supposed to be. So we're like, yeah, we going through Inglewood. That's, 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 and when they told me this, I was like, I'm with it. If we're going to do this, sit, let's do sit, this. Sit me straight. I Grow Chicago stands for Chicago is our neighborhood, our community. Not just one community like uh, Inglewood, South Chicago, Woodlawn, Washington Park. Those are communities, but we use, you use the word Chicago as our neighborhood. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I n your next event is giving turkeys. Whole turkeys, piece of turkey, turkey yes, parts. Yes. 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 I mean, and when is this event? Tomorrow. And tomorrow is what? The 26th? 27th. November the, November the 26th. 26th. 26th, 26th. yes. Yeah. Probably go pick up 50 yeah. turkeys. 50 turkeys. 50 turkeys. And we're trying to give with the turkeys a canned good or a box of Jiffy Mix or some stuffing, yes. something that'll something. lighten mm -hmm. the weight on for for a two Thanksgiving dinner. What was really good about it is Tamika called the schools in particular that we're working with, and she asked them to give a list of families that they knew really needed help this Thanksgiving, and so they gave a list of families. Hyde Park Day School donated 50 turkeys. We're going to put them in the back of your truck and the families will meet us at the Montessori parking lot mm -hmm. from 1 to 3 to pick up their turkeys. And yes, they get a box of Jiffy Mix, they get a box of stuffing, uh, cranberries, chicken broth, gravy. 
gravy. Yeah. I have a question. Why you? Why I grow? I, I just want to hear your opinion. Why you? Why not? I think that it starts with, it starts somewhere with someone. And I know that the communities at large need support. And we're just a team of individuals who want to band together and do what we can. Again, we really want to help sustain mm -hmm. through the yoga and meditation, through the urban farming, and through the arts. And we okay. know there's life behind all those. Okay, we talked about the urban farming. We talked about the events. We talked about I Wolf I Read. Could you tell me more about your purpose and reason for the yoga? I hear you had a, a project this summer over in South Chicago with Yoga in the Hood. Could yeah. you tell me more about that? Yeah. Um, it started with our big farm project on 109th with the four and a half acres, where every morning we would get up and find that the city, well, you were working with the city at risk youth kids, and they would come and they were really stressed out and the mornings were very difficult. And you, Gregory, came and said, what are we going to do about this? And someone told you that I could teach yoga. So. You brought me 250 kids in a field in a 104 degree temperature and asked them to do yoga. And we came to find that even though they complained, they really loved it. And in the end, they were coming back and saying, hey, I really use that meditation to get through the night. I use this to put myself to sleep. I take three and a half hours to get here in the morning and I breathe differently now on the bus. Um, and it's kind of what we said, we can't change their experiences, but we can change the perception of their experiences. And then what I found fascinating is that when I had to move indoors, and I went to Tamika to, for the school, is that their at risk that we had that were 14 to 19 year olds, I was seeing the exact same stress and body patterns in those four and five year olds. So it showed that whatever we want to call it, trauma or stress of life, was already registering in those four and five year olds. And so even now taking them and showing them how to breathe. And how do you get through a moment in time that you don't like? And how do you still feel good about yourself? And where is the core of your being? Um, started to make an impact. And then you and I did it even from the truck where we'd stop along street corners and just sort of teach yoga to kids hanging out. Uh, yeah, um, we did the program with kids yeah. at play yeah. And that's how we created yoga in the hood. Yep. And uh, they liked it. They come, they feel connected to both themselves and to us, and started seeing it making a change. Yeah, it made, it made a big change because I found out, I found through you and those children that overnight stress uh, was the greatest problems with our, our summer programs with us at risk youth. They didn't know how to relieve that pressure. So they would really strike out at a touch. So Robin brought the yoga yeah. into the process and we combined it with urban farming and it was a big hit. Uh, I hear you're going to give blankets, warm blankets this year. Could you tell me the reason for that? Well, Andre, this was your good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had a meeting. So we all was talking about different things, what we're going to do with the community. So I said, can we buy blankets? Was and that thought also created because you knew of a homeless person that froze to death last year up under the violet? Yes, sir, on 79th and Stoney. Yes. And when I thought about her, I thought about the blankets. So I told my, I told my boss, I said, so what I want to do is get these blankets. I want to drive, I want to give them to nobody to give to the homeless. I wanted to do it myself so I know they get these blankets. So wherever they land on the violet in the box on the side of the grass, I'm just going to pull up, go in the back of the truck, cover them up with a blanket, and go to the next destination. And so I ran out of blankets. So that's, that's why Agro do. We, we, we here to help people as well. Okay. That, that's another event that's coming about this year. Yeah. Uh, and we have a toy drive. Yes. yes. Anyone <laughs> wants to tell me about the toy drive? The toy drive. <laughs> uh, I think part of our toy drive, or a possibility of the toy drive uh, donation, is coming from Toys or Tots. Uh, yes. 
Could you tell me more? Well, who, who's well, who's actually, running I the toy drive this year? What is sort of sort of amazing is that we have a board member named Vanessa Masato, and she is out in Plainfield, and she kind of says, "Hey, I would like to help, but I live in the suburbs, so I can't come down. Mm -hmm. So I'll raise things." So amazingly, last year she put up some things and raised 500 books to give to the school. Then this year for our holiday fest. She raised 800 coats <laughs> that we gave away in October. Um, and this is one individual doing it. And then this year she came and she said, I want to put ornaments up on a giving tree. I think I can only get rid of 50 ornaments. And it turns out that she now is up to about 150 ornaments. Mm -hmm. We have about 350 kids this year that we're going to give presents to. Um, but she's going to do 150 of them, and it kind of shows me one person from one place can make an enormous impact. And if she can do that, and we get three or four more people like that, it would just be mindless what we can do. Andre, I heard you had the experience of working on a five-acre agro farm this year. Yes, that's that was very big. It was. <laughs> Yes, it, it was. It, it definitely was an experience. How many pounds of greens? I was you harvest yeah, in one I day harvest yourself. 100, 170 pounds of greens. Have you ever seen that before? I've never seen. I never harvest anything. A, a pound of greens. <laughs> was it? But amazing? 180 pounds of greens. You know you fit to feed somebody. And what did we? And what did you do with those greens? We passed them out. What were those greens donated to? We donated to the communities. We. The domestic, violence, domestic violence centers, domestic violence centers the food banks, food banks. We just harvest these like 170 pounds and just we donated them in 30 pound bags. In 30 pound bag, gallon bags. Yes. It, did that? Did that make you feel? That made me feel great when I know somebody is fit to eat. Hot meal. So you feel the community is benefiting from what we do in our grow? Sure, sure. They ask me all the time. Not just in the farming. Yes, they, they, they ask me all the time. Because I hear you have uh, two daycare uh, centers that come to you twice a yes, day? Yes, Twice a day? Twice a day, day summer, Monday to, to the Friday garden. to the garden. They bring the little kids. They want to see the roosters, the hens. They want to know what I'm doing. What is these raised beds And a for? lot of these, not only children, but grown-ups. Adults as well, yes. Have never seen a live rooster or chicken or yes. a hen. Matter of yes. fact, they think chicken is a rooster and a hen when they are chickens but they do uh, they are varieties in in gender right yes this is true all right yes and how do you feel about that i think it's a great experience Be have you experienced it yet i have experienced it i was at the one on 73rd in jeffrey yes and i walked up and i said whoa is that really what that is <laughs> <laughs> and just to see just to see because i i grew i went I grew up um, over there. I went to Bryn Mawr, which is now Boucher. And so I remember there was once upon a time a building there and then it became a vacant lot. And now to see that it's actually sustaining and feeding a community, well, a will sustain and feed a community because of what you guys are doing. Yes. It's amazing. Uh, I grow started with two people. Am I correct? You and me. All right. <laughs> yes. Uh, and that was two years ago. Yes. Okay, and and now Agro has paid employees and a board okay. and doing events all over Chicago. Uh, Agro also participated in 10,000 Ripples, right? Yes. Uh, where they had a truck. <laughs> with a Buddha head. <laughs> with a Buddha back. head on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes. went all over. Worldwide. Worldwide. Yes. 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 So really what we look to do, right, is yes. we, make, we make communities connect. We make things better. We let people know that there is concern. Uh, through iGrow's beginning, uh, would you say we've sponsored at least through the summer over 500 children? Oh, absolutely. And I was going to say about the animals, the roosters. Um, part of the thing was when the city's put together, when the city puts together that program for at risk, it's a really amazing thing. But the fact is, is that we get students from there that we get to mentor. And 
I mean, last summer, whatever, we dug up that hole, and I think, what was there, 80 or 90 snakes in it? Now they were garden snakes, but there wasn't a single kid that had ever touched a snake. And so they had to carry them across the street. And you get annoyed at times because it's not, nobody wants to reach in and grab them, but we're learning how. You bring the roosters out and all the boys run. It's good. The kids come out and they have, um, they love picking the mice up by the tails. But the other part is, is that building things, hit, using a hammer, using a saw, um, using the chainsaw to cut down all of the bushes that are surrounding so we can clean. Such as the goat corral that the yeah. children built. Making a with, goat corral. With things that were right at hand. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they learn they a skill. They learn the skill. And they love it. Once, you, once they start doing it, they, they like it. And you yeah. intend to continue to do this? Absolutely. I think iGrow should every single year have a garden and that we want to turn it into an art garden too because I think what happened really last year that was great with our youth is that they were able, they painted the trees and they painted signs and they did art that was, you know, what does peace mean to them and what did they want for inside their own environments. And they were really proud. They brought their parents by. They brought their friends by. And I also think, too, that they themselves came to learn that they had the right to express ideas. And some of these children, a lot of these children, parents was dropping them off, right? Yes. And picking them up. But the majority of the children were coming by way of bus. It would take two and a half, three hours to get to your work site. And we were very fortunate. We were considered one of the sites in which everyone came, even when they didn't have to. Right. The kids wanted to be there. They felt safe there, and they knew they were empowered there. Um, and they came no matter what. OK. Uh, I have one question. This question is, is really, I'm asking all three. And what did you benefit from? from these experiences with these children, at-risk adults? Well, I love it because... I was told your, even your son came out a regular. My son is a regular. Yeah, I mean, he um, loved it. But it's an amazingly strong, resilient community. And you see that when you get out there and you see all the strengths and what's positive. And what I find is that when you really listen to the news or just reading, these are at-risk communities are always viewed in a very negative perspective. Robin, wasn't you afraid when you first started? Scared to death. Scared to death of Inglewood. Scared to death. Now I can't keep you out of Inglewood. I know. No, I can't keep you out. <laughs> can't keep you out. <laughs> My could you, could you enlighten us on that fear? <laughs> Oh, I mean, your first day. Careful maybe. there, bud. How about your fear? Driving to my house, you're worried that you might get arrested or that somebody might stop you. We both have fears, and they're fears of the unknown. Mm -hmm. They're fears because we aren't bridged. I when you say our, us, us, you mean we have fears, humans us. in general, right? We have fears of what we don't know. Right, that's the it. unknown. And for me, Inglewood was completely the unknown. The first day I went out and met you, there were three guys sitting around peeing in a can uh, by the garden. And I'm like, oh no, I'm not stopping my car <laughs> here. But you equally, when you had to drive to my house the first time, you're like, I'm gonna get arrested. I'm scared to death. What do you want me to talk to the doorman about? <laughs> and I, we so fear the unknown. So this is where our community lies, and this is where we break that concept. Right. Whereas the greatest fear we have is what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And this is where some people living next door to each other don't even know each other's name, don't even know the child's name. And this is where I grow breaks a barrier of dealing with getting to know each other, bringing the awareness of the community. This is why I believe I grow does the events is to bring out the community itself where they're not just bumping into each other in aggression. Well, when we do yoga outside, it's what we said. We see people start opening their windows. We do a meditation and chant or something, and we see the kids from across the street start walking over. 
when you start putting up a garden, everyone opens their door. Yes. It takes time. Yeah. It doesn't happen in the first few weeks, but four weeks into it, putting up a garden. Yes, they get interested. Yep. You start finding community members coming over. And then do some clever ideas that you've had, you know, like put up a pizza oven and let's feed and have an event. Um, now five or six blocks start coming together and everyone starts to talk to each other. And when we talk to each other, we treat each other differently. You feel more valuable to the community or to the next human being. Uh, in collaboration with I Grow Chicago, I mean with uh, Intergenerational Growing Projects, you uh, created a lot of different relationships, right? Yes. Such as with different aldermen, uh, different state representatives. Uh, now uh, also with uh, intergenera intergenerational growing projects, you have a goal of 100 gardens by 2020, correct? Yes. Uh, could you tell me more about that? Well, that's your area of expertise. <laughs> I mean, you why, why, why 100 gardens? You have the stats for okay. that. Okay, a hundred <laughs> guards would feed the equivalent of three hundred and eighty-five thousand people yep. per month. That would put a great chain break in the food desert. Because if any catastrophe happened in Chicago, our food is either boat, or we're shipped, flew by train, or trucked in. Any real catastrophe that would happen in, in the city of Chicago, we only have enough food to sustain our population for three days. Not saying that the Hunting Gardens would solve the problem, but it would give us time to think about it and solve the problem. It also showed me that there's a solution to all of this that is actually within our doorstep. Yes. I, I mean, you, we've shown kids, here's how to grow potatoes or tomatoes on your front porch. That's a very empowering act, to and be able to grow your own food. And I Grow Chicago is growing full season, right? Yes. Winter houses. and summer. And you grow in hoop houses, mm -hmm. solar tents, and low tunnels. Yes. And yeah. I hear you have an idea, if uh, everything works out, you'll have the first hoop house on the roof. If everything works out. If everything works out. Yeah, we, we're working on that one. <laughs> 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 we're all like, ha ha, let's see. So it's just one more organic To make is there anything you would like to add? I, I believe that what we're doing um, is a ripple for the state of Chicago to help bridge gaps, to help break down barriers. Um, we have conversations with people all the time. Why are you going in those communities? What can you do? What about your safety? Well, we see hope, we see the resilience, and we see that we're not so far removed from the communities that we're serving. Uh, if there was a question or help from the community, how would you ask them? What would you say to the community to help you do what you're doing? What do you need? How can we serve you? How can we partner with you? How can we know your name? Andre, I'm asking you the same thing. Well, I, ask, I tell them all the time, if you want to, tell them, if you want to come to the garden and plant something,